Now we are ready to discuss Laplace transform. Laplace transform is what we call in mathematics a transformation. Laplace transform transforms the signal from the time domain to a new domain that is called the complex frequency domain or the S domain. So you have a signal f of t, you are going to convert it to a new signal called f of s. Now note that when we use the s domain we convert the name of the signal from a small letter f to a capital letter f. This is very much standard in most textbooks. Not all textbooks will follow it, but most textbooks will follow this convention. So if you have a signal in the time domain, you are going to convert the signal to what we call the S domain or the complex frequency domain. Under some conditions, this is called one-to-one -one mapping, which means each signal in f of t will have one equivalent signal in f of s. That means f of t or f of s is the same signal. You're just looking at it from different angles. Let me show you a very simple example. Cosine of 300t. If we look at this signal in the frequency domain, then all what I have to tell you that is the frequency is 300 radian per second. The information about the frequency is enough to tell us that how is the cosine function look like. All what I need to know about this cosine function is the frequency. Basically, if I told you what's the time content of the signal or the frequency content of the signal, it is the same thing. Basically what Laplace transform says, Laplace transform says that I can look at the signal as a function of time, f of t, or I can look at the signal as a function of frequency, which is f of s. Now s as a variable, as a domain, as a variable, is complex frequency. That means it's a complex value. That means it has real part and imaginary part. s will equal to sigma plus j omega. Sigma is the real part and omega is the imaginary part. Now there is a physical interpretation of sigma and omega. I'm not going to go in it in details but I will go over it quick. Sigma tells you how fast the exponential portion of the signal is dropping. Its unit is nipper. And omega tells you what the oscillation frequency is. I'm not going to go over it in details. You can go to references in the literature to know about S. But S will tell you how fast the signal is dropping and what the oscillation frequency is. So to get the Laplace transform of f of t, we use this notation. We use the script L bracket f of t. That means get me the Laplace transform of f of t. So the Laplace transform of f of t will equal to capital F of s. So capital F of s is the Laplace transform of f of t. And this will equal to the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t times e to the minus st dt. This is called double-sided Laplace transform. If the signal is causal, which means that the signal is 0 for t less than 0, this is the case for most real-world scenarios, that you apply the signal at t equals 0, which means now, until some seconds later. So the signal f of t is 0 for t less than 0, that means the signal is causal, then Laplace transform can be expressed as the Laplace of f of t will equal to f of s and that will equal to the integral from 0 minus to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt. Now we use 0 minus here to include the delta function because if you go from 0 minus to 0 plus, 
then you can integrate delta t. Actually, from 0 minus to 0 plus, the delta t has a non-zero value. It's a spike at 0. So if you go just before 0 and just after 0, you will be able to detect the spike of the delta function. Now, this transform is called the single-sided Laplace transform, which is the one that we will use in this course. Now we would like to do a numerical example to find the Laplace transform of a function using the definition. Let f of t equals delta t find its Laplace transform f of s. To evaluate the Laplace transform of the delta function, we need to know three important properties. The first one is if we multiply the delta t by a function, let's say that g of t, then this will equal to delta t times g at 0. So let me show you that graphically. So if we plot g of t, and we plot the delta function, and we know that the delta function will be spike at 0, then when you do the multiplication graphically, you multiply by zeros everywhere, but at t equals 0, where you have g at 0 is multiplied by the delta function. So that's the graphical representation. The second property you should know is when you integrate the delta function, if the integral limit includes the delta function, then the area under the curve will be 1. So you can say that the integral of delta t dt equals 1. The third property you should know is that e to the 0 equals 1. So we can say that the Laplace transform of delta t will equal to the integral from 0 minus to infinity times delta t times e to the minus st dt. This will equal to the integral from 0 minus to infinity. Now, when we multiply the delta function times e to the minus st, the result will be delta t times e to the minus s times 0. You substitute for t of this function at 0. This is basically the property of the delta function, times delta t. But we know that e to the 0 is 1, so this term is gone. Now what we have is the integral from 0 minus to infinity of delta t dt, and this basically is 1. So now we know that the Laplace transform of delta t is transformed into 1. And this property needs to be memorized or written down in your integration table.